Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. And what we're going to do starting off with is head back out to Karayan 3, which, towards the conclusion of the last episode, had arrived back to Kerbin Station. And uh, we had set up a maneuver to send it back out to the moon, but it had to wait several hours for that injection burn. Well, that burn is coming right now. And while we perform this burn, why don't we talk a bit about what this mission is and uh, what we got coming up in this episode. You can see that our crew, our, we got our pilot, Burick, our scientist, Shell Pal, and our engineer, Wilman. And they are on their way to the moon to clean up basically the mess <laughs> that I left behind last episode. You might recall, uh, yeah, I was trying to do some, uh, some building of a space station, basically, and there was a lot of rendezvousing involved, and, well, I severely ran out of monopropellant and had no RCS, and the result was, well, quite a lot of flotsam floating up out of the place. So the first mission for these folks is to be going out there and kind of clearing that up and getting that station up and operational. And I thought, you know, that turned into quite a bit of rendezvousing. So I thought I would make that sort of the theme of this particular episode. Um, there's quite a different variety of rendezvous that have to be performed. I haven't talked about that kind of thing in, in some time, so I thought this might be a good opportunity to talk about if you are one of these people that has issues with meeting up with spacecraft in different locations in different orbits, well, this might just be the episode for you. Why don't we start off with why these folks had to wait about five hours or so before making their injection out towards the moon. Well, that has to do with the fact that they have to rendezvous with objects that are in a polar orbit about the moon, and I really want to avoid having to make expensive inclination changes in and around the moon. So what you do is you wait until the orbit of the object you want to rendezvous with is lined up properly. Now, when you're moving into another SOI, useful thing to remember is that KSP shows you the state of that sphere of influence of what it's going to be like upon your arrival. So you can see here that my orbit now is in line with the orbit, the polar orbit that I want to rendezvous with. Now, of course, I am also driving straight smack dab into the center of the moon. So that's going to necessitate a correction. I don't want to drive into the moon. So uh, we do that, of course, uh, out mid-course, you know, about halfway or so out there, we're going to make a correction. We're going to push ourselves towards the north. Uh, we got to make sure that our resulting trajectory is going in the same direction as the object that we want to rendezvous with. You don't want to make that mistake and have to make a 180 degree inclination change once you are out there. Okay. Uh, let's go in. Where's my periapsis here? I'll select my periapsis and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to burn until my periapsis gets up to about 60 kilometers, which is the altitude of the orbit here. And then in this way I will ensure that any inclination changes I have to make in order to do my rendezvous will be trivial. There we go. Okay. And these folks are going to be at their closest approach in about four and a half hours. So we'll be rejoining them in just a little bit, but in the meantime, while well, there's something else from last episode I have to deal with. This is Minmus Driller 2, which was left in this uh, trajectory during its injection out towards Minmus last episode that I severely botched because uh, the exhaust gases from one of the engines was being partially blocked, which threw off the whole center of thrust and I couldn't fly it straight. Now wasted a ton of fuel, so now it's kind of dubious whether I'm able to make an injection uh, into, or a capture around Minmus. So I think the best plan is for me to just sort of leave it in this orbit, but the, and, and it's not intersecting with Minmus, so Minmus won't mess up the orbit, but the problem is, is the, the, the orbit does uh, intersect with the moon's orbit and I don't have an encounter right now but if I leave it in here for a while eventually it's going to end up having an encounter with the moon and then who knows what's going to be happening after that so I'd love to be able to just sort of change its inclination and get it so that it won't be encountering the moon or at least very unlikely that it'll encounter the moon um, and then I'll send out some Kerbals to go fix it up and hopefully get it towards Minmus uh, unfortunately <laughs> 
in all the confusion of the injection last episode, I forgot to raise this dish antenna, which means that I have no communication link. I am playing with remote tech uh, with a link. I can't raise the antenna. Uh, so this thing is actually dead in space. So there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I'll just have to sort of keep an eye on it and hope for the best. And when I can spare some kerbals, I'll hopefully be able to get somebody out here and see if we can not salvage this mission. But for now, why don't we get ourselves back to the Korion 3 on its approach to the moon. And once at Periapsis, what we're going to be doing is performing a burn to put us in a phasing orbit that will allow us to do a single orbit and then we'll be joining up with our target after we perform that orbit back here at Periapsis is the best way in which to do this rendezvous. I actually do have a tutorial on phasing orbits if you want to see this talked about in a little bit more detail. And you can see right here actually I'm using a maneuver note but you don't even need a maneuver note to do this. You just have to point yourself retrograde and keep burning watching those target indicators and when you get those target indicators nice and close then uh, that you you know you got this thing all set up alrighty let's get rid of the maneuver here we'll keep ourselves pointed retrograde let's turn on some RCS we'll just finish it off with a few puffs of RCS dial this in as close as we can Ah, that'll do it. Okay, so we got a closest approach of 0.8 kilometers. We'll be there in one hour and 43 minutes. So that'll give us some time to check in on how well all of our Flotsam and Jetsam is doing. So here we are at the Kegel 4, which is docked with our station module that we got to get to asteroid. Yoy, oh my gosh, we are moving away from the asteroid at 21.8 meters per second. And we are now 11.3 kilometers away. Okay, let's see if we can not get this moving in the right direction. Because we would like to have all our debris relatively close by. <laughs> it would be easier to rendezvous with it all that way. Now you might recall last episode, I actually left this thing less than 200 meters away from the asteroid and it pretty much killed off its relative velocity. So you might be wondering like, how on earth did it end up this far away and moving away from it at such a speed? Well, that has to do with how high the gravity gradient around the moon is. And by gravity gradient, what I'm talking about, whenever you use the word gradient, what you're talking about is how quickly something is changing. How quickly does the gravitational field around the moon changes? And this has to do with different locations. Two locations, even relatively close together around the moon, have different gravitational field strengths around them. So how quickly that gravitational field strength changes um, is called the gravity gradient. And because in KSP, everything is at basically a 1 to 10 scale or a 10 to 1 scale. I always get that backwards. But everything's 10 times smaller than what it would typically be in real life. That gravity gradient tends to be pretty steep. Everything is, all the changes are multiplied by 10. So this is actually a problem that doesn't exist as uh, it's, it's actually more of a problem in KSP than it is in the real world, how quickly gravity fields change just slightly in in, in because of location. So, um, yeah, we just even being just a couple of hundred meters apart, that's a difference gravi in gravitational field strength, not just in the strength, but also in its direction. So it's going to pull these objects apart. Regardless, we have to fix this. Now, Yoi is behind us in the orbit, but in roughly the same orbit. And the best thing to do is to actually burn in the opposite direction from Yoi. So that's what I'm doing right now. I am burning prograde. This is raising my orbit and thus also raising my orbital period and, in a sense, slowing me down by burning prograde. By burning prograde, I'm going slower. And so once I do a complete orbit, I will have drifted backwards a little bit and rendezvoused with Asteroid Joy. So all I have to do is just watch those close encounter indicators. Oh, that'll do it. 0.4 kilometers. I'm going to be there in 49 minutes. That's before the Karayan gets there. So that'll work out well. Okay. Now let's take a look at what some of the rest of this debris is. What is the Kegel 4 probe? I don't know what that is. Let's check it out. Oh, this is my abandoned tug. 
This is the tug that brought the um, station module out this way. Oh, I can't take it out of hibernation mode. It says I don't have a connection. I put it in hibernation mode last episode because it doesn't have any power generation. Okay, can I activate the antenna? No, remote tech says no. Okay, so this thing's dead. <laughs> I'm not sure if I did something wrong when putting it in hibernation mode or not. Regardless, uh, I do want to send the Karayan out to go get it because it does have quite a bit of fuel in it. I think it'll be useful. Oh, this is a docking adapter. Yeah, I guess I'll have to send the Karayan out to go get this too. But in the meantime, let's go and check in on our supply barge. Okay, Yoi is 6.3 kilometers ahead of us. So what we're going to do with the supply barge is, well, the opposite of what we did with the Kegel 4, is uh, we're going to burn in the opposite direction from Yoi, which is retrograde. Oh, looks like the purple ones are the ones to watch, so we'll keep an eye on the purple close encounter indicators. Do little puffs on the engine. Get them as close as we can. Oh, that's pretty good. That's half a kilometer. We're going to be there in 47 minutes. Again, before the Karayan gets there. That's excellent. So we'll set up an alarm for that rendezvous. And then we'll rejoin the Kegel as it approaches onto the asteroid. And uh, again, we're not going to be doing any docking here. I mean, the whole problem is that both of these vehicles are out of monopropellant. So... Uh, Docking would be a bit of an issue, especially considering the fact that the asteroid is tumbling, <laughs> thanks to my adventures last episode and the persistent rotation mod. But all I want to do is get it down to a relative velocity of zero, and hopefully it will stay in this general vicinity long enough for the Karine to be able to easily get it. Ah, that's the alarm for the supply barge. Okay, the supply barge is coming in here too. <laughs> let's let's kill off this relative velocity. There we go. Okay, that's good enough. Hopefully this will stay in the vicinity long enough for the Karayan to get it. And of course, we're going to do the same thing here with the supply barge. But I'm not going to bother showing you that one. Why don't we get ourselves to the Karayan 3 as it makes its approach to this whole mess. All right, so we are coming in to now just under five minutes. So let's stop this. Let's hop out to Yoi and see how things are going in the vicinity. Oh, the Kegel is now two kilometers away. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of nudge it in the right direction. And then we'll do the same thing with the supply barge, which has also drifted away a bit from the asteroid. Then we'll come back to the Karayan, and in fact, we don't want to rendezvous with the asteroid at all. We want to rendezvous, we're going to rendezvous first with the Kegel. We'll fill it up with monopropellant, so we'll switch our target to the Kegel 4. The interface with Kerbal Engineer is just great for this, especially when all your targets are so close together and it's hard to click on the one that you want. Okay, so we're going to have to adjust our approach here just a little bit now that we switched our targets should be okay all right a little bit of a burn here okay so that's 0.2 kilometers that's good enough for now let's time warp ourselves a little bit closer Man, we got a lot of stuff all kind of converging to the same spot. Alrighty, why don't we cut our time warp? We're about four minutes away. Let's check in on the supply barge. Alrighty, and... Okay, we're about six minutes away from the asteroid. I'm going to rendezvous with this after I rendezvous with the Kegel and transfer over monoprop to the Kegel. Uh, that's a little bit tight, so why don't we slow this down a little bit? Make ourselves retrograde, we'll get ourselves a little bit, aiming a little bit closer to. Okay, a little bit more. Alrighty, that's eight minutes away, so let's hop over to the Kegel. There we are, oh, yep, there we go, Kegel, Kegel is a 
over six minutes away. That should be good. So we'll switch back to the Karayan. All right, we're just under three minutes away, but our relative velocity is about 87 meters per second. So we should knock off some of that velocity there. We'll do the rest of this without going into map mode. Using the information coming to us from the Better Burn Time mod, I love this mod. This mod has become one of my must-haves, I think, now, just for this data that's coming down here by the map ball. It's brilliant. Okay, so we're going to need some fuel pipes. So let's check our inventory. No fuel pipes there. Are any of my Kerbals carrying fuel pipes? Loman doesn't have any fuel pipes. Any fuel pipes? No, none in here. Yeah, I did check that. Okay. Uh, there should be fuel pipes on here somewhere. Nope, that is not a storage thing. We do have these external lockers, yeah, but I can't access them. I have, right, I have to go EVA to access them. Um, okay, what I'll do, get Wilman here, and I did see a screwdriver, so we'll make sure Wilman has his screwdriver. Okay, but we really do need to deal with this rendezvous first. We'll find those fuel pipes later. Let's knock off some more relative velocity. Okay, we're now three minutes away. We can actually afford to time warp ourselves, I think, in a little bit closer. And you see me do lots of these kinds of rendezvous, so why don't we cut ourselves a little bit closer to the action? If you take a look, you can see the asteroid there towards the right, and we are moving away from it though we're we're still less than half a kilometer away so it should be okay if we get this done quickly oh and there's the fuel barge <laughs> the fuel barge is moving towards the asteroid oh we got a lot of stuff happening here okay we are i think so let's, let's start uh stopping ourselves relative to the station module here and then we'll get uh, Wilman out there, start looking for some fuel pipes, some KAS fuel pipe endpoints so we can hook these two things together. Oh, that'll do. Okay, Wilman, get on out there. Go. Okay, uh, check this one. Nope, no fuel pipes there. We'll fly over to the other side. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come back. Stop, stop. Don't look at the solar panel. Oh, oh my gosh. I think I came really close to smashing into that. Okay, we're under control now. <laughs> Just to explain, I had recently reinstalled... Um, here, let's check these things. Maybe we got some fuel pipes on the Kegel. Recently reinstalled EVA enhancements, which gives you the ability to yaw and roll and pitch your Kerbals while on EVA, which I think is really cool. But to do it normal flying, <laughs> you have to put on the SAS, and the default now when you do an EVA is that it's SAS off, so that's why I kind of lost control there. Okay, no fuel pipes on the Kegel. Let's check these inventories here. I don't know if, no, none there, but that might have been the one I checked already once. What about on the other side here? No, where the heck are my fuel pipes? Probably some Kerbal stole them. You know, that's really easy to do with KIS, is to, uh, is to inadvertently leave some, some inventory in a Kerbal's inventory and then bring them down to the surface and then you forgot that you did that and you don't have them. Okay, I, okay, I gotta start farting around. Uh, we gotta, the fuel barge is really coming close to the asteroid here. <laughs> Let's, uh, bring this thing to a relative stop with the asteroid because I don't want it to get too far away. All right, here we go. There. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, let's get back to Wilman. Wait a second, maybe there's a big inventory container up here. Um, I can't seem to be checking, you know, I can't. Okay, let's get to Wilman, 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 Wilman. There's a big inventory container on the station module. Maybe I put some fuel pipes by chance in there. Let's check. Oh, we gotta get closer. Fuel pipes, fuel pipes, fuel pipes. Inventory. 
Oh my god, yes, okay. Uh, fuel pipes. Alright. <laughs> I think I got lucky there. Okay, so we'll get Wilman to hook this back up. If I didn't find those fuel pipes, what I would have had to have done was to undock the Kegel 4 and then dock the Karayan with the Kegel 4 and then transferred over the monopop and then brought the Kegel 4 and docked back with the, with the uh, station module and pushed it over there. Um, it's doable, but it would have been a pain in the butt. This is obviously a lot simpler. And once we filled up the Kegel 4 with monopropellant, we disconnected, obviously, and then we sent the Korion off to its next target, which is the supply barge, which is now 1.3 kilometers away and moving away at 5 meters per second. Let's go get them. And nothing fancy here. We're close enough, and time is a bit of, it, of the essence here. We're just going to burn straight at them. And once again, I'm going to extol the wonders of better burn time, allowing me to do this very precisely without getting into maneuver nodes or anything. There we go. We're going to be 0.2 kilometers away from it in about 12 minutes. That should give me time to dock this uh, station module finally with the asteroid, which was what this whole mission was about. I gotta say, the Kegel 4 can really shove this thing around. <laughs> I'm kind of impressed with it. So, of course, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to burn at the station, get ourselves closing in on it. Or the asteroid, sorry. It's not a station yet. Right now, it is still just a rock. But hopefully, once this thing is on it, we can officially call it a station, I think. Once again, better burn time taking out a lot of the guesswork out of this. It always sort of bugged me that in Kerbal Engineer, they didn't have a closest approach data that you could bring up with the Kerbal Engineer data. I always thought that was something that was sorely missing, but now that Better Burn Time is providing it and is such a convenient location, then it's fine. You know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it now, as you probably can tell. Anyway, why don't we get ourselves to the docking? The docking is, well, you know, the asteroid's still tumbling. <laughs> so I got myself a moving target that I have to hit thanks to the persistent rotation mod. There are no reaction wheels or probe cores or anything on this asteroid, just a, a few scattered docking ports. But once we are docked, the reaction wheels that are in the Kegel should be able to allow us to control the attitude of the asteroid, so it should make it easier from here on in once we are docked. Of course, the only RCS is on the Kegel, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, to say it's unbalanced, I think would be putting it mildly. But we are almost there. I have to continually adjust the attitude of the station to keep it in line with the docking port. But, there we go. Okay, now it's time to get quickly out to the Karayan and dock with the supply barge, which, well, is easy peasy because uh, both of these have reaction wheels now. Imagine that. And uh, no need for fuel pipes now. There's both their available docking ports so we can transfer over the monoprop without any issues. And once the propellant was transferred over, we sent supply barge back towards asteroid Yoy. And once I've convinced KSP that the Karain is a ship and not a space station, here we go, uh, we're going to send it after the abandoned tug that we saw earlier in this episode. Now that tug is behind us in the orbit and quite a distance away, so we're going to use the burn in the opposite direction trick, burning prograde and just keeping an eye on those close encounter indicators until they get nice and close together and then we'll do an orbit and then we'll meet around here in a little bit more that'll do it we'll be there in about 55 minutes so that gives us plenty of time to dock the supply barge which now that the asteroid is being nicely held steady by the kegel 4 this is no problem whatsoever and this is what I had so much trouble doing last episode. Amazing how easy things are if you have the right supplies with you. 
Then we'll quickly get back to the Karayan 3 on its approach to the tug, which of course we hooked up to using again some KAS fuel pipe endpoints, stole all of its fuel, and then disposed of it using a KIS explosive charge, because that's the fun way to get rid of things. And then it was off to that abandoned docking adapter. Yes, we might as well clean this whole place up, which I decided I wasn't going to get rid of. I'm actually going to take with me back to the station because, uh, you know, you never know when parts might end up being useful, especially docking ports can end up being useful. And I do have quite a bit of storage space on this station, and I do mean station now. I have officially renamed this from Asteroid Yoy to Yoy Station. Now that we have a science module, we have habitation and life support and all the rest, I think it definitely calls it, uh, it's definitely appropriate to refer to this now as a station. So after snuggling up nice and close to the storage container, I got Wilman out there once again and we tethered the Karayan to the asteroid using the fuel pipe once again. This is not the transfer of resources, just, just to hold it in place. And because these are 2.5 meter parts, I actually need two Kerbals to move them around. So we got Shellcal out there hanging on to a handhold that was nicely placed there by Wilman. I do have a bit of wobbling happening because I forgot to turn off the reaction wheels in the Karayan and we got some reaction wheels fighting with each other. Now, reaction wheels do not like being perpendicular to each other with flimsy connections. I have the SAS off now, so this should settle itself out. So we are moving over the 2.5 meter parts. There we go. Now all that's left is that one docking port now. Previous experience has taught me, don't, you gotta undock these docking ports. There we go. If you pull it off using KAS, um, while it's docked, it gets rather borked. I had an episode quite some time ago where that happened. All right, Wilman has successfully grabbed it. We now have everything stowed away. All that's left to do is to get Shell Cal back aboard the Karayan. We'll dock the Karayan to the asteroid. And then Wilman's got a little bit of strutting to do. Just to fancify this up a little bit, give it a, an air of permanence, I suppose. And with that accomplished, we'll stow away our tools. We'll get Wilman back aboard. And that's not even the primary reason why I sent these folks out here. They do have missions to perform. They have contracts to fulfill and science to collect. But I think that's going to have to all be for next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. And I hope to see you again next time.